I'm going to start with a kind of uh, general question for everybody, for all the teams, okay? And uh, this is just some uh, uh, general uh, kind of stuff. Um, I want to uh, ask a, a kind of series of questions, and I'll work my way through each group. So let's, uh, let's start with uh, Vincent and Darren. Um, and to begin with, I want to ask about briefly about your backgrounds. I kind of, you know, used to make terrible films like as a kid with my dad's Super 8 millimeter camera. I cast my parents in various roles um, and they did it <laughs> uh, because they had to. Uh, then I started doing um, drama uh, as a kid uh, yeah, um, and, I, and I'd, you know, use actors from my drama class to make films. And then I went to film school. Um, after that, I realized it was pretty hard to actually get paid to direct. <laughs> So um, then I, um, I've been producing for a lot um, uh, with Darren, um, but uh, I, I've also been working in casting for a, like a long time, and I work as an agent for child actors. And, and by doing that, it's, uh, it's been really great practice to learn effective ways to direct uh, actors, I think. Uh, so there was a bit of a gap in my directing career, and then I really wanted to get back and direct. But the more I was producing, uh, the more people just saw me as a producer, and, and I was wanted to get back and direct. So, so this was the project. There was, a, there was a gap, and I ended up just putting all of my own money into, into making it. All right, good. Excellent. Um, Darren, do you want to say something brief? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it brief. <laughs> <laughs> keep it brief. <laughs> was that too long? <laughs> um, well, like Vincent, from a young age, I was sort of um, doing plays and things like that at home, but I was always very creative. Um, I achieved uh, a patent at a very young age uh, of 18 years of age and um, actually for a recycling uh, system for Coca-Cola of all companies. You said um, brief, <laughs> <laughs> um, And then actually I moved into, because I was young and it was back in the early 90s, I moved into um, the internet um, and became a sort of a dot-com entrepreneur. And then, of course, the internet moved in the direction of... Um, film with the likes of Netflix and I just happened to move in that direction doing some um, advertising for the likes of Middleton and Jemison and then music videos for Universal and, and, and the likes and myself and Vincent uh, started working on together on those projects and then eventually um, films so yeah okay all right and, and I'm gonna give you guys some very quick questions and we'll work our way down the, the whole line um, how many days did you shoot so we did six days initially with the the actors uh, in Dublin, which which looks a lot like Liverpool, and and then we went to Liverpool and shot on the actual locations. We did two days there, where we filmed the exteriors of the shopping centre, the police stations, and and all of that. And very little had changed, so um, it kind of feels like it's all set in Liverpool and it's authentic. Very good. And now, can I ask what your budget was? Uh, yeah, it kept going up. And <laughs> that, that's something we're all familiar with. Um, I mean, we ended up around like maybe 35,000 or something, and then. Dollars or pounds or. Euros. Euro. Euro. Um, all right, so it's a little more about. Yeah, it. but then you don't really budget for film festival fees and all of that, like right. afterwards. So, so it's still going up. Right. <laughs> Very good. And um, how was it financed? You said earlier you kind of put your own money into it, pretty much. I did, yeah, because it, it's uh, it's it's such a sensitive uh, subject. You know, um, you know, people would have been they were afraid to kind of put funding into it because it had the potential to be, you know, an extremely divisive film, or or else just made in supremely bad taste. Um, I hope. It's neither, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so in the end, I, I uh, got a bit frustrated and figured the only way it was gonna get made was if I, was if I emptied my entire bank account into it and hit the credit cards hard. And you did. I did, <laughs> you told me I was crazy, yeah. Well, great piece of work. All Thank right, you. let me jump to uh, Jeremy and uh, Maria. Um, same questions, but very brief on the background, because re really what I'm driving at is this. In the Student Academy Awards, we, we s have Europeans sometimes that do very well, and although they're film students, they're about 35 and they're directing BMW commercials, so they're very experienced in the Student Academy Awards sometimes on the foreign films. So I'm looking for that kind of a really brief background. <laughs> 
Well, actually, I grew up in the countryside. I always been a dream to be a filmmaker, and I started doing skateboard videos. It led me to do documentaries. I traveled the world. I studied at film school, and uh, I always wanted to do fiction films. So this is my second short uh, uh, fiction film. Great. I, I, I do want to say something about all of the directors that are that are uh, next to me right now, and that is all of them have made other shorts, and all of them wrote these films. One was a co-writer, but all of them wrote their films. So that's except, where I'm starting from. Except from uh, Skin that was co-written uh, written by Sharon. Okay, Ramon, good. Who's there. Right. right. Her idea, but then you, you co-wrote it together. But we'll, we'll get down to you in a second. So, uh, uh, Maria, um, question number two. Uh, how many shoot days? How many shoot days? It was five days shoot. Five days total. Very really good. Small. And uh, uh, what was the budget? It was one hundred and fifty dollars. Dollars in dollars. I'm really bad yeah. with numbers in English, so one five zero 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 zero. Right, <laughs> one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And um, uh, how was it financed? We were lucky enough to get grants from the government in Quebec, so from Sodec and Calc. So yeah. So that's where Thank the bulk you. of the Thank of the financing came. Yeah, from. Marguerite too. Right. Excellent. For them, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. All right, we're going to come back to everybody, so everyone will have a chance to talk again. Marguerite. Yes. For um, Mary Ellen and uh, I mean, I'm sorry for Marianne and Marie Ellen. Uh, background. Background. Um, I have been an actress for over 20 years, and I also produce. And this is my second short film. Um, and we we started working on this a couple years ago. We've been friends for a long time. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Excellent. And uh, how many um, shoot days? Three. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and the budget? Budget was uh, 180,000 uh, Canadian. Canadian. Yeah. Which is like 22,000 American. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. It's, it's like 150, wouldn't it be? Yeah, a little yeah. less. Okay. Or is, is that yeah, right? Yeah, I was or kidding. I was kidding. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and ha and how was it financed? So same as for uh, Canadian, um, the Quebec and Canadian governments. So tax credits and uh, so that can calc. Excellent. Yeah, you, you know the 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 non-U.S. filmmakers get a lot of government support. We don't we don't get that here. Yeah, we're very fortunate, but yep. it's hard to get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, jumping ahead to skin. Guy, tell us a little bit about your background. Our background is like we're husband and wife. I knew that, but I'm glad you told um, everybody. <laughs> uh, I started Tel Aviv, Israel, and we um, had a long distance relationship in a way. And I moved to the States. I made films in Israel, uh, features and shorts. And when I moved to the States, this was our first um, kind of a project together that launched into the feature called Skin. So it's right. kind of like a short before the feature. Right. Because, because uh, if anybody who doesn't know, Skin was. The short was picked up by Fox Searchlight, and this team has already made a feature out of Skin. But f in reading the synopsis, it seemed a little different. But of course, it's not 12 minutes long, so it, it has to be. So it's a, it's a little different and fuller story. Um, how many shoot days? Uh, four and a half. Wow. And the budget? <laughs> I don't know if I want to say <laughs> because we com we as you did because of the we, box searchlight situation. No, no, no. Uh -huh. they, they just came in at the very end to help us with this sort of. But no, we we emptied our retirement fund into this. Uh -huh. uh, so that that answers my last question. It, you guys again basically financed it yourself. Well, we so we wanted we had a full script for the feature. The feature is based on a true story. Um, and no one back in 2016, early 16, uh, wanted to make a film about, you know, the alt-right, you know, the white supremacist movie in this country because they felt that it wasn't sort of a big deal. Um, Until Trump got elected. Yeah, and Charlottesville. And I, so we, we decided, Guy and Sharon wrote this script, and we just said, fuck it, let's just make our own project. And, and right after we made the short, the, f uh, the feature got financed, and... And we premiered at Toronto, and we're coming out in July. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right, I'm going to um, jump to another question again for everybody. Um, the films, for the most part, except for Marguerite, I have to 
hasten to add, hmm. uh, are dark and, and very moody. And in, in thinking about this, I have to say that I have seen certain trends in the past uh, kind of influence artists and kind of take over. I think there's a certain, if you will, kind of zeitgeist right now uh, amongst artists that uh, I don't want to talk too much about, but I'd like to ask our filmmakers to talk about it. So maybe we'll start this time with uh, with the guy and uh, and Jamie and uh, ask you to react to that situation. You know, I'm 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 coming from a troubled country um, with a lot of racism, a lot of troubles to a troubled country, and I think that the movies are a reflection of what we're experiencing right now in the world. The world is dark. Um, we see it in France and when. Jews are being attacked. We just came back from Berlin from festival when we saw the right wing, you know, um, was raising and, and, and people, skinheads in the streets. And, you know, both my grandparents are Holocaust survivors. And seeing this influence you uh, immediately. Now, LA and New York are bubbles in a way. But drive two hours away from LA and you start to see Confederate flags all over the place and, you know, the states is in a very dark place right now. So I think it's a sheer reflection for all of us filmmakers of what's going on in the world. And it's, you know, it's, it happened after Vietnam. You saw like, you know, the Deer Hunter and all those movies and you saw it after every, every dark time, there's, there's expression from, from cinema. And we have a five-month-old daughter, um, and <laughs> and so I think it was a lot on our minds. What is this next generation inheriting? How does how do these mentalities affect children? Then they become adults and they have children, and so how does it perpetuate generation to generation? So I think we're we're scared, <laughs> and and that was why we felt very compelled to make this. Um, Marie Ellen and and. Uh and Marianne, I think Marguerite is a, is a kind of respite tonight, but tell us how you feel about the collection and, and, and this issue. Well, I, I, can, I can talk about Marguerite. I think I, I understand where all these filmmakers come from. I wanted to make Marguerite because there is so much violence in the world. It, it was my way of saying, you know, the only thing that can counter that is human connection, it's compassion, it's empathy. So that's really, that was my motivation for making Mar Marguerite. So I, th I think it's just a different point of view on the same subject. It's maybe a more feminine point of view. Um, and I'm the only female fil filmmaker, so I can say that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really moved by these films. Um, I wouldn't watch them 10 times in a row because I, I would die, I think. <laughs> I'm like still shaking, but but it's true. I mean, everything that we saw on screen is, is real and, and scary. Marilyn, do you want to add something? No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Jeremy and uh, uh, Maria Garcia, your turn. Yeah, well, I guess uh, we've been traveling to a lot of festivals this year, and it's been s such a different films that we saw. You know, there's a lot of, of comedies and stuff. So, But I feel from, from my perspective, for Fauve, it came from a nightmare when I was a little boy. And... It, it came also from my relationship with my best friend at the time where we used to pull pranks at each other and this kind of toxic masculinity that like as boys, you know, it we can push ourselves to do to, to very dangerous stuff, to go a bit too far. So that's really a reflection of of what I saw as a child. And I think that it goes a bit what everybody said, where like it's very personal film. This really comes from such a true place and it really happened that tonight is a selection of in parentheses, darker films. But for my film specifically, I really wanted the ending to be hopeful because at the end of the day, I think everything is full circle and you know sometimes nature speaks to you. And so I really wanted to have this kind of almost a very lyrical moment that kind of leaves you with hope. Yeah, no, I, I think like having hope in a film like where darkness is, there's also hope in something better. And I feel like also there's so many films, but the way that I can perceive the selection of tonight is like they're all impactful film in the way they're made and what they're bringing to the table more than darker or lighter film. So I feel like maybe that's where people were really interested by 
those films in particular. Very good. And uh, Vincent and Darren, you're last. Well, a bit, a bit like uh, Fo, like we experienced, we were young when, when those boys um, actually committed that atrocity. We were only a few years older than them. Um, so I know that's a very dark film, but we, we did want to bring a little bit of light to the whole thing because um, throughout our lives, we, we only saw one side, which was actually quite negative. Um, but I think that the film shows, even with some, you know, a terrible atrocity, that there, you know, there is a, there is still humanity. You can sort of still see it there, and I think that was important for us because we, you know, we experienced it firsthand ourselves um, at the time. Well, yeah. I mean, anybody from the UK and Ireland remembers the shudder they felt when when they hear the name James Bulger mentioned. Um, I, Probably not so much here, but maybe every country has one. But I, So I grew up uh, hearing about this case. Could never understand how two 10-year-old boys um, could kill a toddler. Uh, but I was always told that it was because they were evil, just simply evil, born evil. And, and that's still the popular opinion at the moment. Um, and I understand it because when it happened, people just couldn't cope with the idea that these were two 10-year-old boys that had done it. And the only way they could make sense of it was if they were evil. And now that's become public opinion and so ingrained in people's minds. Uh, they've been hearing it for 26 years in the tabloids, uh, so much so that anybody who suggests an alternate reason or, or tries to understand all oh, these boys, uh, they get criticized for it and, and, and attacked. And as a result, it's stifled debate on the whole thing, uh, the whole issue. You can't even talk about it. Um, so I wanted to make it because I, I think there needs to be uh, an informed public debate on the circumstances which led to this crime. Uh, I think detainment is, it doesn't necessarily have all the answers, but it does allow people to ask the right questions. In Britain, as some of you may know, a detainment has, has in particular caused a real uproar because of the visceralness of this, this uh, horrible story. All right, we don't have too much time left. I'm going to ask for uh, uh, quick answers on one last question. We'll start down the end with, uh, uh, with Guy and Jamie. Um, question is, what do you like most about your film? The director. <laughs> <laughs> the producer was amazing with me, especially after, this, after the shooting day. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, no, I, 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 you know, it's you, um, wow, that's a tricky question, isn't that's it? That's a horrible question, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. Well, can, no, I, it's can, funny I say my, can I say my favorite, sure. my favorite little piece? Sure, sure. So um, when we cast the little, the little kid, uh, sort of the lead guy, the little, little kid in it, um, we were Skyping with him, and his mom sent me a video of his, his school, um, uh, they had for school they had to pick their favorite animal and he chose a snake and he had to do a whole presentation about the snake and so when we were shooting guy said hey jackson why don't you just while we're rolling do your do your snake you know pitch why snakes are and that ended up in the film and sort of was a metaphor and i and i loved how you know guy just sort of really was able to transfer that from real life and put it into the film and it stayed that's a brilliant answer <laughs> <laughs> thank you um Marianne and uh, Marie Ellen, favorite part of your film? Well, I think the connection between the two actresses is really what moves me the, the most. Uh, the fact that the film is about love, but ageless. It's, you know, love can be between a man and a woman, two men, two women, or, and depend, you know, doesn't, the, the age doesn't matter. So I, I think that that really shows through. That and the bath scene, I think, is the... The fact that we see a woman's body aging, that is something that's rarely seen, and it's shown with sensuality. So, that yeah, that's sense. what I would say as well. Is it bring it's 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 two um, female characters that are not stereotype, the stereo stereotype, your stereotypical um, characters that you see in in films um, these days. They're not sex symbols. They're not angry mothers. They're not crazy ex-girlfriends. They're just women and of, you know, an 80-year-old woman and a 40-year-old woman. So that's what I love the most. Very good. 
And uh, Jeremy and uh, Maria Garcia, your, your, what do you like most about your film? Uh, I have to say, I think it's the experience and the way that, like, it's so much work, but there's so many people involved, and it's crazy how it builds such a strong relationship when you're there. And I also just want to acknowledge that here we have also the other producer of the film, Evan Wajeli, who's there, who's an amazing man and producer. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like making movie kind of remember us what is it to create something together? And I think this bond is really particular. And in Fauve, there was so many challenges and that all the team were s so in with us. That was kind of a crazy, beautiful part of the experience. I agree, and I will add on this, that the way the shoot ended was so beautiful because we're actually shooting uh, the last um, shot of the film, which is the boy crying and the fox at the same time at sunset. We were running late and Felix was just so good. Like, and people were actually crying on set, looking at him doing his performance. And, and then we, f we wrap the shoot and then we take our, uh, the, the crew picture and then suddenly there's fireworks. We don't know where they popped, where they came from, <laughs> but they exploded in the sky and it was just <laughs> magical. Very good. And lastly, Vincent and Darren, what do you like most about your film? For me, I think it's the performances of the two boys are just incredible. <laughs> and um, to, to, to actually be there on set um, when they, when they were, were performing, it was, it was like real life. It really was. It was, I've never experienced anything like it. Like it, it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's going to be the performances of those boys. Um, they are two incredibly talented uh, child actors, Eli Solon and Leon Hughes. Um, and I mean, that was probably the biggest challenge of the film, you know, to find these two boys that could convincingly play those roles. Um, and, and, and there's so many of these challenging emotional scenes um, and they all had to ring true because if they didn't, I mean, the film would have just been a disaster. Um, so, I mean, a lot of it, you know, is, is down to those two boys, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and it was great working with them as well. You know, uh, Eli had, hadn't even acted. So uh, yeah, they were probably two of the most challenging roles, I think, for child actors to play. And, and it was great to be able to give them this opportunity to, to reach their potential and, and to do that. Excellent. I, I could do this for another hour, but we're not gonna. <laughs> I wanna thank our filmmakers and congratulate you and thank our audience for being here.